All of you switch on your cam. All of you switch on your cameras, please. Switch on your cameras. See, if you want to open a saved R script, you all can just simply click on file. File, open file, search for the file and click on open. All right. <clears throat> so we have done till here in the previous class, right? Now we'll be starting with. So yesterday when we were writing mean of mean of uh, mean of x comma y, we were getting a wrong answer, right? If you all remember. Uh, Rishi, I'll take your query uh, after class. You should have told me this before the before class, right? How can I take your individual query right now? You cannot download R. This is not possible. I mean, how can you not download R? Rishi, <clears throat> call me after the class, okay? And share the screenshot. Of your error, if there is an error, share, share the screenshot. All right. So uh, when we were writing mean x comma y, we were getting the error. We were getting a small error that we were getting a wrong answer. Actually, our answer was just coming as the value of x. Why? Because in mean, so not all functions are accustomed in a similar manner. Like here, we can write sum of x comma y. Here in mean, we cannot write x comma y. We have to put all the values in the first variable itself. So how to put more than one value in just one variable? So here we have only one variable. A, we've given it a value of seven, right? Here we have A, we've given it a value of twenty-four. But if I want to assign more than one value to one variable, then for that we'll have to use something called as vectors. Something called as vectors. There are small exercises also which I'll share after the class. You all can do all these exercises later on. See, so basically in our programming we have different types of objects, right? So these are vectors, factors, matrices, data frames, list functions, and arrays. In today's class we'll be covering the vectors, and if possible we can cover the first two. What are objects? So in R programming, as we have seen that we were storing these values into particular variables. These variables are actually known as objects. Object is something which contains a value. Clear? Clear? What is the actual difference between object and variable? We'll understand this when we'll be doing data frame. Right? We'll get a better clarity of what actually is the difference between a variable and a object. Now we'll start with vectors. So there are different types of vectors that you can create, right? There are different types of vectors that we can create. Firstly, what? Why do we need vectors? So you have studied vectors. If you have studied vectors in maths in class twelve, vectors are what it it is vertical representation of numbers, right? These are vertical representations. Here in R, we have horizontal represented vectors. These are single dimensional. Single dimensional meaning it just has one row and many columns. It just has one row and many columns, right? So it's single dimensional. That is one thing. Second thing, it can contain only same type of values. Same type of values meaning it can only contain either numeric values or character values or complex numbers, similar. Or maybe logical values. So it can only be of one single type. 
clear so these are the few characteristics of a uh, vector now suppose in the name column in the name variable so this is the name variable in the name variable for example i am assigning value shivangi and let me assign praveen and actuator okay so now when i run this now when i run this see i'm getting an error unexpected comma so basically it will just see till here after this comma it will st stop considering why because in one variable we can store only one value right so in order to store more than one value we use something called as c function we use something called as c function so you just write a small c and you separate all the values which you want to store using comma here and when i run this now you see we have name let me just clear the global environment window now when i run this we have name it's a character it's a character type vector 1 2 3 this signifies there are three elements or three values in your uh, vector shivangi praveen actuators right there is no shortcut just simply copy paste narayan just simply copy paste i want all of you all to switch on your cameras okay now there are a few basic functionalities which we can perform on a vector for example you can take out the length of a vector what is length how many elements are there or how many values are there in a vector so here we have three values so we are getting the answer of 3 so we are getting the answer of we can also check the type of the vector as we did yesterday uh so we can we were writing is dot numeric is dot complex similarly there is a function called is dot vector and we can check whether this is a vector or not this is a so since i have written a wrong spelling so it says that object name not found because there is no object with this particular word right i have written a wrong spelling name clear proof clear here so is dot vector name similarly we can also since a vector since a vector can only have a single type of variable we can also check the type is dot character name see a uh, one or two shortcuts which you can use in excel so see we have true just see once over here suppose i am writing the function is dot numeric when i type nu i get is dot numeric just scroll use up and down buttons up arrow down arrow then click on tab the moment you click on tab the formula completes itself the function and the brackets you get the brackets automatically right so you don't have to again and again type the entire function create brackets click on tab is dot numeric answer will be false because it's a character type a vector right now one more thing we can check the structure str structure of the vector so what are we getting structure is it's a character data type the data type is character there are one two three elements so there are three elements and these are the different elements or values which are there clear even a single value is a vector so for example when i was storing when i was storing just a single value to this particular variable or an object even this is considered as a even this is considered as a vector clear so even a single value you store in a object is considered as a what now the other thing that we'll have to we'll understand here is that as we say that parsing as we say that a vector can only have single data type right it can only have a single data type so if it's a character vector it will always be a character vector 
if it's a numeric vector it will always be a numeric vector but what if what if i try to do something like this 23 24 and in quotes i am writing 25 so 23 24 is number 25 is a character because i am using quotes now when i run this see what r will do is that it will change all these other two values into a character so what we did yesterday all the values can be converted into a character but not all characters can be converted to values other values so here all my numerics are converted into character here clear 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 similarly for example if i write if i write x if i am assigning 23 24 and i am writing false so these two are numeric this is a logical value can logical be converted into numeric yes false is zero but can 24 converted into logical no only zero and one can be converted into logical zero is false one is true right so when i run this see what happens false is automatically converted to zero right then we have y for example um now let me yes narayan tell me mute yourself i'll explain i'll explain i'll explain i'll explain so here for example i'm writing so here we have here we have numbers here we have a logical value here we also have a character so now all these will be converted into because you cannot convert actuators into a number or you cannot convert this into a logical value so all these will be converted into character so when i run this you will get character clear 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 is it clear now narayan so basically aisa nahi ho raha ki apne aap kuch ho raha hai okay it's all logical over here so these are values these are numbers this is a logical output the logical value so since you cannot convert 23 24 into logical so even the logical value is getting converted into a number right here you cannot convert this into a number or a logical value so it's get getting converted into everything is getting converted into a character clear here we can simply print y and check or you can simply write y and run and check all are within now here see this x was taken this x was converted this x was converted into what number number numeric vector numeric vector so can we find out or let me now can we find out let's see if i just run x so i'm getting 23 24 and 0 so now can we find out mean of x yes now we can do that and we'll get the correct answer so yesterday when we were doing mean x comma y we were getting a wrong answer here if you divide 23 if you just add 23 plus 24 plus 0 and divide by 3 you will get 15.67 clear clear all right now there are some other ways as well are you all with me right complete it till here
If it is done, please write a yes in the chat box. All right. Now there are other ways also of creating a vector. Now there are other ways also of creating a vector. Yes. Cha. Hmm. So it's a good question that you are asking. She is asking that this particular vector we can easily convert in numeric also. Since this all this is in quotes, you can just remove the quote and convert. But see, by default, R will always convert. If there is any one single character in your vector, it will convert all the values into character. But if you yourself wants to convert this into a numeric, then you can write as dot numeric as dot numeric. Age. When I run this, I get all the new values. By default, if you have any one single character in your entire vector, it will be converted. All will be converted into character. If you have number plus logical, it will be converted into number. If any one single character is there, all the values will be converted into character. Very good question. Richa, clear? Clear to all. So you can use as dot numeric. To convert it into numeric, and again, if you want, you can store this in age, right? So age now, see, age is now converted. Very good. Now there are other ways of creating a vector as well. So one is using sequential operator. Sequential operator. So basically, sequential operator is Doubt. Where there is no doubt, then tenth by sequential operator one two. Let's suppose I want to store all the values from one to thousand. So will you sit and type down one two three four? No, there might be some shortcut to it. So I can just write one colon hundred. Colon means all the numbers one two three will be stored in A. So when I run this, see. A has all the numbers from one to hundred. Now again, another thing which you have to see over here is that by default, this A is taken as integer, not double. Why? If you take this as double, there will be unlimited numbers between one to hundred, and you cannot store unlimited numbers in one place, right? Can you store it? No. So by default, whenever you use a sequential operator, it will be taken as integer. Right, so R actually understands what you want to, do and it does that for you. You don't have to always specify these small things. So it's automatically getting converted into an. Clear, clear, clear. Great. Now, um, <clears throat> now, so now we can also find the length of A, which is hundred. You can just simply type A and run. See, you will get all the values from one to. Hundred. Here, another thing is sequence function. Sequence function. So type here S E Q. The help tab. Type S E Q. S E -Q. And see, we have sequence function. So here, S E Q. From suppose I want to store numbers from six to twenty-four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so on. So from six to twenty-four. Six to twenty-four. You are getting all the numbers. Now, suppose you want to store all the values from six to twenty-four, but 
the gap must be of 2. So, 6, 8, 10, so on. Only the even numbers. So, here I will write by equal to. And when you run this, get the answer. So, this by variable, this by argument in the function, this denotes what should be the increment between the numbers. What should be the increment between the numbers. Or you can straight away, or you can straight away write sq 6, 24, 2. By default, this 2 will be taken as by argument. From by. From to by. Here, now suppose store all values from the 1. Do this. All values from 50 to 1. 50, 49, 48, so on till 1.
Hmm. So uh, there are two ways of doing it. There are two ways of doing it. Either you can write simply 50 colon 1, right? Or we can use a sequence function 50 comma 1 and by minus 1. Here? Here? Huh, without writing by also you might get the answer because by default huh? wait I'll come to it huh? By default, this is the value which it takes. 2 minus from 1 minus 50. 2 minus from divided by length out minus 1. Now, what is this length out? We'll talk about this. Wait. This is understood how we can, you know, just write any numbers, whatever we want. The other thing is that, uh, suppose I want um, to get 40 numbers between 1 to 60 between 1 to 60 here I want Sneha please mute yourself first of all no one is switching on your cameras right and secondly please don't all of you must switch on your cameras please Alright, so I want 40 numbers in total and all these 40 numbers should be between 1 to 60. Alright, so now I will write sequence. I know it should start from 1. It should end till 60. From 1 to 60. Another thing I know is that the length of my vector will be 40. But I don't know the gap between the numbers. So I can write length equal to 40 and I run this and see we have in total 40 numbers we have in total 40 numbers and the gap is taken to be as just subtract this from this I think it's 1.512821 this is the gap which is taken now how is this gap being calculated this gap is being calculated using this formula 2 minus from divided by length minus 1 so, 60 minus 1 divided by 40 minus 1 will give you this value. Because, because we cannot have integers, right? We cannot have integers. The gap should be same. Between all the numbers, the gap should be same. This gap between the two numbers should be same. And the first number should be 1 and the last number should be 60. Clear? The first number and the last number should always be 60 and the gap should be same. That is why it is coming as double not integer. Clear? Is this clear? Now, now when I know this by, so here this by is basically what? 60 minus 1 divided by 40 minus 1 and when I run this, we have this 1.51. Correct? Correct? But now see, you cannot use length and by arguments together in a sequence function. If I am doing that, for example, if I am taking this vector, if I am taking this vector and in the by argument, in the by argument, I am writing this entire thing. For example, and when I run this, you will never get the answer because you cannot use by argument and length argument together even if even if the gap is 1.51 you will still not get the answer because r will never take these two arguments together so length is used when you want that particular amount that particular given numbers so i want 40 numbers so you write length equal to 40 and when you want a particular width a particular gap between the two numbers you can use by argument is this clear 
is this clear your screen is blur check the help tab check the help tab don't answer whenever you have any question check the help tab the more you learn to check help tab all right i think now it will be clear so you all can just pin the shared screen okay so you cannot use by and you cannot use by and length arguments together all right dheere tod mat do laptop ko aaram se all right so now we'll use another method the third method is using repeat or rep replicate uh, function so here we can simply write rep suppose i want to repeat uh, 10 100 times i want to repeat 10 100 times and i want to store it in a particular vector let's say suppose d so i will write 10 comma 100 just check the repeat function rep so you can write x and then how many times you want to repeat this value so i want to repeat 10 and see in the vector d you have number and there are 100 values of 10 clear 100 values of 10 clear right you can also repeat suppose 2 comma 3 you can repeat this 10 times see 2 3 another thing is another argument over here is each argument each argument so this is basically times another argument is each so first it will repeat all the twos and then it will repeat all the clear is it clear is it clear another uh, function which we use generally we use this in cs2 numeric 10 this is actually just like rep repeat or replicate function the only difference is it will repeat zero it will repeat zeros 10 times 100 times 20 times whatever you want so there is just one argument that you put within it number of times you want to repeat zero so by default numeric is like replicate only is right is like rep only rep only the only difference is it will only repeat zero here we are repeating 10 100 times we are repeating 2 comma 3 10 times here in numeric function you can only repeat zero so you just give the number of times you want to repeat this particular value zero see it will only repeat it will only repeat zeros clear 
here this is only two repeat zero. All right. Now there are some other uh, basic functionalities which are there in uh, our programming. We may not be using it a lot. For example, we have letters. So when I type letters, so this is a vector. This is a this is inbuilt vector of R. What is inbuilt vector of R? So suppose here there are these different objects that we are creating: a, age, b, name. These are the different objects that we are creating, right? So similarly, letter is an object which is pre-stored in Excel in our programming. This is an object which is pre-stored in our letters. Similarly, if you write capital P, capital letters, you will get capital letters. Right? So these are pre-stored vectors. All right. We can also create vector of vectors. We can also create vector of vectors. How? How? We can also create vector of vectors. For example, we have vectors x, 1, 2, 3, y, 5, 6. Now, if you want to create a vector, you can create, you can write x comma y and you will create a vector of vectors. A vector of vectors. It is very important that you all go back home and revise the content every day. Otherwise, you will forget what we are doing. I will give you some assignments as well. Please practice those assignments and you have to go through the entire R script again. Otherwise, you'll forget everything. <clears throat> and we can also use some basic functions with vectors like we have done yesterday. So we can write mean of x. We can write mean of x. We can take out sum of x. We can take out maximum of x. And right? We can also perform some basic arithmetic like we have C. X and Y, these are two vectors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can write X plus Y. We can write X plus Y. And what it will do is this is X, this is Y. This is Y. And when I am writing X plus Y, what it is doing is 1 plus 4, 5 plus 5, 7, 3 plus 6, 9. Clear? Clear, Shrey? Fine. Shrey, is it okay? You can also write x plus 2. So it will add 2 to all the numbers in x. Alright. Now for example, just see over here. Recycling of vectors. What is recycling of vectors? Actually, these terminologies which are there, recycling, coercing, these terminologies are very difficult or maybe a little tricky. But the functions or the, the functions that we are actually carrying out are very simple. Alright, so these are technical names which are given. Coercing. What is coercing? Coercing was actually all the numbers will be converted into character if there is one character. So these terminologies are difficult so that, you know, people uh, find uh, language coding very difficult actually these are the reasons why people actually find coding as difficult because of these words otherwise it's very simple right so here recycling of vector what is recycling of vector so we have x we have three elements in x 
we have three values in it now if i create a new vector z for example and i have just four and five two values so z just has two values x has three values now what if i write x plus z x plus z and when i run this what it will do is that we see x is 1 2 3 z is 4 5 so 1 plus 4 5 2 plus 5 7 and then again this smaller vector recycles itself so 3 plus 4 so for 1 I have 4 for 2 I have 5 for 3 again this will repeat itself and we have 3 plus 4 7 so and then we also we get the output but we also get a warning saying that x plus z longer object length what is the longer object x it has three values longer object length is not a multiple of the shorter object so shorter object is of length 2 longer object is of length 3 so it is saying that the shorter the longer object is not a multiple of shorter object so 3 is not a multiple of 2 but what if, but what if, see this carefully, I have another vector by 1 and 4. Right? So basically I have y, I have z. y has 4 values, z has 2 values. Now if I write y plus z, again z is a shorter value, shorter vector. So I am getting the answer. What what is the answer? 1 plus 4? 2 plus 5? 3 plus again 4. 4 plus 5. So here the shorter object of length 2 is Z. Longer object of length 4 is Y. And longer object is a multiple of shorter object so you're not getting any warning there's a difference between a warning and an error a warning is something which you will get maybe you're performing something wrong your calculation is wrong but you will still get the answer at least when when there is an error in the code you will never get an answer clear is it clear to everyone is So basically recycling of shorter vectors. Z will recycle from the start. If it recycles completely, here it recycled completely, 4 and 5, you will not get a warning. If it does not recycle completely, you will get a warning message. Shrey, is it clear? Alright. Now another functionality is which you can perform is for example we have x greater than let me write 3. So we are getting so what were the values in x? 1, 2, 3. So false, false, false. No value is greater than 3. No value is greater than 3. If I write x greater than equal to 2, we are getting false, true. Here. Now the next thing that we'll be doing is to create named vectors. Creating named vectors. What is named vectors? So for example, let me create a vector. So we have actually a vector age. So we, ha we have a vector age 23, 24, 25. Now I want the names. For example, uh, a is named as 20, aged as 23, B is aged as 24, C is aged as 20, 25. So I also want names on top of these values. So how we can do this? Using names function. Names function. Within the names function, you mention the object you want to name. For example, I will write age. I want to name the age vector. And what all names do you want to give? You can write within 
see and when i run age now when i run age now see a b c a 23 b 24 c 25 you can also check the structure of age now so the structure is it says named why because now this is a named vector named numeric 1 2 3 24 25 20 23 uh, 24 25 and what are the names the names are a b c Here. Now one more thing. If I write names, age, and here, for example, I name it as, I name it as just A and A comma B. I forgot to name the third person. And when I run this, and when I run age, I will have A B, and this is N A, missing. i forgot to name the third person so no problem no problem but but if i do this but if i do this a b c d although there are just three values although there are just three values but i am also creating a fourth value so we are getting a error so we are getting see here we are getting a error names attribute is 4 but must be of length names attribute is of length 4 but it must be of length 3 here here so this is a error that we are now the last topic for today is indexing very 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 important indexation is it clear till here everyone if there is any problem you all can let me know is uh this one right so here i just named i just gave it ab and when i am running this for this i am getting a error so this this code is not getting performed right whenever you get a error it means that your function is not running there is an error in your function no value of age will not change there is a difference between a error and a warning in warning when we were having that recycling warning warning is something where your code will run but there is a warning maybe you have written some thing wrong or maybe something you need to check so that's that's a warning that r will give you but if it's an error then r will not perform that function for you right you are getting a clear cut error so the value of age will not change now we will be performing indexation so what is indexation what is indexation suppose i have i created a all right so here i created this vector by 1 2 3 4 now i want to extract the second or the third element from by or maybe maybe let me create a new vector just randomly i'm putting in numbers so this is a vector which i am creating by and i want to put in i want to extract the third element of this particular value so now you have seen that whenever we run any particular vector we get this one in brackets what does this one signifies is that this suggests the indexation the place 
For example, if I run this number a, this vector a. So this vector we have 1, we have 15. Where is this coming from? If you count till here, there are 14 values. This is the 15th value. That is why we have 15. So whenever we have numbers within square brackets or the third brackets, these are signed for indexation. Right? So when I am using, in suppose A, I am using third brackets and within third brackets I am writing 8. This will extract the 8th element. This will extract the 8th element. For example, in Y, for example, in Y, if I am extracting the third or the fourth value, this will extract 45. So third bracket is used for indexing. What is indexing? Extracting values from a particular vector. Clear? Clear? You have to tell what the position you want to extract. This can also be in this format, see. Suppose you want to extract the third and the fourth values. So you can write 3 comma in a vector. You cannot write 3 comma 4. You cannot write 3 comma 4. You have to write it using a vector. Correct. 15 and after 15. Similarly, I can write 2 colon 4. I will get all the values, second value, third value and fourth values. Is it clear? Indexing is clear. Indexing is very, very important. Indexing. Or maybe I want to extract all the values of y. I want to extract all the values of y except, except maybe third value. I want to extract all the values of y except this. So I will write minus 3. And see I am getting all the values except 56. I am getting all the values except. Similarly you can do it this way. Also. You can write minus 3 comma 4. All the values except the third and the fourth value. You are getting all the values except the except the third and the fourth. Here, now where I created this vector by so I have 34, 67, all these numbers randomly. Suppose here I just have 5 numbers. For example, I have a very huge vector which has 100 and 200 of values. I just want to extract those values which are greater than 50, for example. So what I can do is, again, within indexing, whenever you want to extract, you have to use third brackets. So I will write y greater than 50. Now see what will happen when I just run this portion. When I just run this portion y greater than 50 and I just run this, it is giving me false true, false true. These numbers are, sorry, these numbers are greater than 50. This is false, this is false. So I want to extract just three values, these three values. Clear. Now when I am putting this within this particular third bracket, all the true values I will extract, all the true values and false values will not be extracted. So see, we have extracted all the true values and the false values are not here. Now this is a task for you all, all values between Forty sixty inclusive. All right, between forty two. Extract all the values of y between forty to sixty. I 
I will write y. Y greater than equal to 40. And y less than equal to 60. So here what will happen? It will first check what if I run this. Just see if I just run this. These are two statements which I have combined using AND operator. So when I am writing greater than 40, here you will get true, 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 true. But I also have it should be less than 60. So I will get false, false. Here I will get a true and here I will get a true. So when I just run this, when I just run this portion of the code, when I just run this portion of the code, false, false, false. And when I run this, Within the brackets, just extract the two values. Here, very third. Because you are combining two statements, you cannot combine two statements. How will R understand whether you are combining it using AND or OR operator? Huh. We can we can do this with the help of a vector. For example, I am using a vector x1. For example, I am creating a vector x1 with this. So what will happen? All these values will be stored in vector x1. When I run this, all these values, see when I run x1, all these values are stored in x1. And now when I put y x1, y x1 I will get so when I was writing 2 colon 4 within y I was actually putting in a vector right all right it's is it fine is it okay now for named vectors for named vectors how we can do this for example I had a named vector age let me do one thing let me run this particular of line and now when I run age again so I have the proper named huh huh your yeah, type ke acha So now if I want to, so now if I want to, is it fine? Is it fine? So now, Those who are on my in my live class, please just bear for five more minutes with the blur screen because I think there is an issue. Is it fine? You all can just pin my screen. So here when I am typing age, I it's a named vector, right? A, B, C. Now I want to extract. I don't know the age. I just know the name of the person. I know I want to extract the age of person B. I don't know the exact position. So what I can do is again age is the name of the vector. So I will first write the vector. Then indexation. And here instead of writing 2, 3, the exact position I can write B within quotes. And when I run this, and when I run this, I will get 20. You can also do something like this. A. Here, 23, 20. Is it fine? Just try this if you have any doubts. I'll come back in just one minute.
all right is it fine till here so we have to do one more topic but we'll do it tomorrow tomorrow we'll have a extra class of r i'll inform the timing and actually we'll take i think one i need more four to five classes to finish basics so you'll have to cooperate i know sometimes it is boring because we are just doing the basics what you have to do you have to revise the content very nicely okay every day so we have done two classes first class was just basic installation first class was just basic installation so previous class and this class i will share this script with you all 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 right so you all can just go through the script i will share two assignments so see you have to do these two assignments this is the small exercise i'll share these ppt and this is the another this is the another task slide 4 and 5 all right so these two assignments which you have to practice and you have to come tomorrow i will inform the timing in the any doubts any doubt students who are attending online class any doubts harsh shri richa any doubt Shh. any doubts any doubt why no answer ma'am just video gets blurred so next time i will uh, actually share my screen as i did today right so i will share the screen pane now you will not face this all right thank you so much tomorrow we'll continue from here